The year is 1987 and Nike just announced the first sneaker in history that boasts a visible transparent bubble of air in its sole. A bold statement of the future of sneaker design. Would you have loved it or hated it? Is this new air unit purely a gimmick playing off shock value to pique the interest of the sneaker industry's most gullible consumers? Well, today, Nike Air technology is a pillar of the sneaker industry, coveted, imitated, and respected worldwide. But in 1987, some people even within Nike hated it. The designer who conceived this futuristic new concept put his entire career on the line when pitching the visible air unit. It was widely discussed that I had pushed it too far. People were trying to get us fired. Fast forward 30 years into the future and it's 2017. Could any of the original Nike haters have guessed we'd be wearing these? Much like the conversation surrounding Nike Air technology in 1987, Nike Air Vapor Max is an extremely divisive topic. This is one corner of sneaker design that you really either love or hate. Regardless of how you feel about it though, what is the true identity of Vapor Max? Is it the pinnacle of the Nike Air unit's evolution? The ultimate performance running shoe, as Nike's marketing would have you believe? Or is it merely one visual element of sneaker design pushed to its limits for the sake of a bold fashion statement? Hello everybody and welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Brian and my brother Nacho and I make videos on sneaker history and all things related to sneaker culture. So if you're into sneakers, then you might want to consider subscribing to this channel because we make videos like this all the time and you're not going to want to miss an upload. All right guys, with that out of the way, let's get into the video about the Nike Vapor Max. Vapor Max is one of the youngest lines of sneakers that we've ever covered in our videos. The first Vapor Max dropped only three years ago in March of 2017 for $190. Despite the shocking aesthetic of its sole, the first version was actually pretty minimal. One of the main goals of the Vapor Max design was to do away with unnecessary aspects of the shoe, cutting down on the weight and bringing the wear closer to the air technology. The process of designing and testing the Vapor Max sole was painstaking. Legend has it that it took 15 tries to get the sole right and that the shoe had to be tested on 350 different runners. Nike also claims that the mold for the sole is composed of over 39,000 different components. The exhaustive testing and reworking of the VaporMax sole resulted in its designers completely eliminating the need for a couple of elements that are typically essential to the anatomy of most sneakers. Previous Air Max running shoes such as the Air Max 95 and Air Max 97 had always incorporated a thick layer of foam which comprised the midsole among other elements such as glue and rubber. Flyknit Vapor Maxes, however, are comprised only of the Flyknit upper molded to a single mass of TPU. Since Nike chose to market Vapor Max as the future of running sneaker technology, I'm curious to hear from runners as to how the Vapor Max performs as a running shoe. I've never tried on a pair of Flyknit Vapor Maxes myself, but I do own a pair of Vapor Max 360s, and I cannot imagine choosing to run in them over any other running shoe. The Vapor Max 360s are a comfortable enough sneaker, but even just walking in them feels sort of unstable. Have you guys ever tried on a pair of Vapor Maxes? What, what was that experience like? Did you actually go running in them? I've heard from a lot of people that they actually roll their ankle. Leave a comment down below. It's hard to give a generalized breakdown about the anatomy of a VaporMax shoe because many of the VaporMax releases we've seen since its first drop have been hybrid designs. Attaching VaporMax soles to the uppers of OG silhouettes, there's the VaporMax 97, 95, the VaporMax 360, and the VaporMax Plus. Even though the VaporMax line is only like three years old, there's already too many models to cover in one single video. Like they really went all out with the Vapor Max line. There's the laceless Vapor Max Mach, short for Moccasin, and the Vapor Max Mach 2, the Vapor Max 2019 and 2019 Utility, the Vapor Max Glycy, which, while not really a hybrid, is based on the Nike Air DT Max. Or how about the Vapor Max FK 2020, which features a two part lace locking system, which you pull from the back to lock and release at the front at the top of the tongue. The shoe was marketed not only as being made of at least 50% recycled materials, but also marking the next steps towards Nike's ultimate goal of zero carbon, zero waste. I wonder if they're gonna commit to that. Adding to the list of Nike's many collabs with Off-White, there's a Nike Air Vapor Max Off-White 2018. Another high fashion collab, we've got the laceless Nike Air Vapor Max Comms de Garçon. One of my personal favorites is the Cactus Plant Flea Market and Women's Air Vapor Max 2019 collab. A unisex women's size priority Vapor Max that sports an avant-garde asymmetrical design with so many details and hidden features. To get the standard version in my size right now, I'd have to drop around $1,400. 
A couple of months ago, Jordan brand actually implemented the VaporMax sole into its shoe with the Jordan Rain. These are horrible if you've ever seen, they look like a Team Jordan or maybe like a some kind of Jordan Fusion. And I don't know, if you thought the Air Jordan Rain was the most wild application of the VaporMax technology, think again. Check out the women's Nike Air VaporMax Lite 2. Released in 2018 with a price tag of $180, I don't think this hybrid boot was much of a hit because I could hardly even find any information about them online. Not a single YouTube review. How do you guys rate the acronym in Nike Air VaporMax mock? Retailing for $225, it came in three different colorways and was first teased to consumers with an old western style short film starring acronym founder Earlson Hugh and singer-songwriter John Mayer, who himself is known to be both a sneakerhead and a fan of acronym. If you guys want the full story of the acronym VaporMax, check out this video that our homie Dr. Souls made all about the collab. I'll put a link to his video in the description. So, we know that despite the initial pushback on the idea of the visible air unit in the Air Max 1, the shoe was a monumental success. And though we might be able to draw parallels between the Air Max 1 and the VaporMax, not every sneaker that includes bold, risky new technology is successful in its leap of faith. If you watched our video on the history of Nike Shox, you know that Shox was one of those Nike releases that took that leap of faith and ended up failing short of Nike's other endeavors. The hype was relatively short-lived and Shox just never found the acceptance and long-term mainstream success that the Jordan or Air Max lines enjoyed and grew from. Is VaporMax doomed to a similar fate as Nike Shox? Seems to me that if VaporMax cushioning tech doesn't end up being the future of running shoe design, VaporMax is likely going to have to survive off the strength of its aesthetic appeal alone which honestly, at this point, I could see working out. VaporMax has already seen so many hybrids and collabs in the mere three years since its launch that, love it or hate it, I think we've only seen the beginning of VaporMax. What are your guys' thoughts on the longevity of VaporMax, and do you think it's really gonna stand the test of time or not? But hey, if you wanna learn more about sneaker history, I put together this playlist with my brother Nacho of all the sneaker history videos that we've done. We've done, uh, we've done the Air Presto, We've done the Nike Air Hirachi, we've done the Air Jordan 1, Air Jordan 4, Air Jordan 11. So go ahead and click on that and it'll take you over to a playlist of all our sneaker history videos, which I think you will really enjoy. And I'll see you over in those videos. So thank you guys so much for watching. See you over in those videos and peace.